VR has been around for over 60 years, in 1957, but it actually didn't start there. You see, the concept of VR actually started way back in 1832. For you to actually be able to understand that, witness it yourself, I'm gonna have to give this to you. According to Futuro.com, stereotopic photography was made in 1832. Now this is what a stereoscopic photo looked like. It's very similar to what we have today with the two lenses in our headsets. This type of photography was made by a man named Sir Charles Wheatstone. His version of the VR was not even virtual and it had nothing to do with computers. It was just simply a way to look at photos in a more realistic and immersive way. And this is why the photos are copied to be exactly the same similar to two lenses in a VR headset today. Now, while this was a really cool concept of his, it didn't really work. The product looked similar to binoculars. When he created these binoculars, he used a metal plate to reflect the photo off of to give a 3D aspect in this view. Even though he was successful by doing this, it was seen as a nuisance since it was so blurry. Even though Mr. Wheatstone's creation was seen as a complete failure, there was a man named Sir Brewster who still liked the idea. Similar to how you are gonna like this video and listen to the rest of this history lesson. David Brewster built off of what Sir Charles had created and made a way better version of these binoculars. You see, first he added two lenses instead of the silver plating, but he didn't just add them willy-nilly, he separated them by six centimeters exactly. This allowed the viewer's eyes to adjust to the photo way easier than a blurry image. He also added two holes on the side so that light would come in and the photo wouldn't be dark anymore. Then he cut a slit here so that photos could change in and out. The two lenses David added are very similar to today. The only difference is these are electronic and you can change the eye spacing. In 1851, David caught Queen Victoria's attention and she was mind blown. This invention was so popular, it was sold to over 300,000 people in less than three months. Eventually, he started a company called London Stereoscopic. Over time, he made improvements to the stereoscope to lessen dizziness, make it lighter, and improve the viewing distance. The only problem was people started copying the photos and selling them for cheaper. This of course caused major trouble with David's company, which ultimately forced David to raise prices, which would later cause the downfall of his company. In the 1870s, the stereoscope was no longer a nice trend and everything fell off from there. In less than 100 years, in 1957, the sensorama was invented. Morton Heilig also had this brilliant idea of being immersed into photos. He built a stationary machine to allow you to be immersed into movies. Now, debatably, this machine is actually better than today's VR. Not only did it have a nice visual display and good audio, but it also had moving air, vibrations, and even aromas to smell during certain scenes in the movie. However, Morton didn't just stop there. Just three years later, he developed a prototype of the telesphere mask. This mask was known as a head-mounted display, or HMD. And in 1961, just a year later, he was able to develop it for military purposes. This headset was linked to cameras, so if I changed the direction of my head, so would the cameras. In 1965, a man named Ivan Sutherland created this idea where this VR headset would allow you to be fully immersed, to be able to physically touch things, feel things, hear things, and essentially be inside that virtual world. This is literally VR now, and because of this man's idea, we have VR here today. 12 years later in 1977, MIT or Massachusetts Institution of Technology, that's a mouthful, created the Aspen Movie Map. Now this is what it looks like. It was essentially a TV with a touch screen on it. The reason why this is so similar to VR is because you were able to move around similar to Google Maps today. And since it gave this 3D aspect, it just continued to make scientists more inspired to keep building this technology up. In 1985, the company called VPL Research created the first VR goggles and gloves. Two years later, the company began to make virtual reality a term of popularity. In 1989, the first video game with 3D technology was created and this gave major inspiration to VR companies. In 1983, the VR becomes purchasable for the common man or woman. This was because Sega created the Sega VR headset. And yes, the term headset was now a thing. 
Unfortunately, the Sega VR did become a failure because people didn't like the future of technology and made an excuse that this would damage your eyes. But that did not stop virtual reality from growing. Two years later, in 1995, the VR headset called the Virtual IO eyeglasses were produced, and the same year, Nintendo created the Virtual Boy. These two devices also became an absolute failure due to the fact of, well, more excuses. Bruh. People claimed it was a lonely device separating people from the real world. And the truth is, I agree with that. You should be spending time with your family and friends in person, not just through a virtual reality or on your phone. And that's why depression is more common today is because of our technology. I'm not saying technology is all bad and in fact, I think it's a great thing. But getting back on track, 15 years later, in 2010, virtual reality became another trend. Google created a stereoscopic 3D version of the Google Maps. In 2012, Palmer Lucky was lucky enough to create the Oculus Rift prototype. But in 2014, good old Mark Zuckerberg bought out Oculus VR for $2 billion. Ah, that's crazy. This of course allowed Mark Zuckerberg to create the Oculus Quest 1 through 3. And now in 2024, we have the brand new Apple Vision Pro, which absolutely changed VR in a whole new way. The Apple Vision didn't just make virtual reality more realistic, but it also allowed connections with the things around you in real life. So it's time to take off this headset. Now let's talk about the future of what VR may hold. The first thing I hope changes is the headset so that I don't have to have red on my forehead or my cheeks. I believe that most things will be good in the future. We have companies that really want to be able to create better productive ways of doing things through VR, not to mention have better connections with others through VR. Again, I do believe that having a face-to-face -face conversation with friends and family are extremely important. But within the next 10 to 20 years, VR could be changed so much so to the point where it actually helps us have better connection with others. I wasn't able to find any information on the future of VR, so I really have no actual evidence. But I do know for sure that VR will only get better from here.